people are like snowflakes. No two are alike. Our individuality will always prove this right. We move in chosen circles, feeling secure in our own space, not wanting to realize the world is a bigger place. For some, it's too unfortunate when they decide to stand alone, believing the issue won't affect them until it finally hits home. It's so easy and so simple to stay in our own town, but true success is measured in finding common ground.
Hello, I'm Jim Nelson, and welcome to Common Ground. No story on the Western frontier would be complete if it didn't talk about the impact of black people made. And no Western should ever be shown without the inclusion of the black cowboy. In fact, if it wasn't for the black cowboy, our biggest reminder of those days would be totally forgotten. Hollywood, there's some of our forgotten cowboys. Silver screens fade away and let die. Some of our fathers were some hard riding cowboys who taught many to use the road, sit a saddle and ride. But when I see and hear of the cowboys we speak of, it's the cowboys they forgot. When your little black cowboys and cowgirls start asking things. In the brief 40-year period that gave Americans the development of the West, many of the stories about the black cowboy will never be told. They've been lost in history forever. But like so many times in the building of this great nation, black contributions were never recorded, even though their achievements were inspiring. The saga of the black cowboy is yet another example because we were there. When it was time to drive the cattle, up from Texas to the northern meat markets, we were there. When the Broncos needed busting and the Steers needed branding, we were there. When the sun was scorching and the snow was blinding on the long, hard trail, we were there. When the West was won, we were there. We roped them, rode them, broke them, drove them, and harnessed the power that was the West. Nearly 8,000 of us, black cowboys, we made our mark on American history in the West. Pioneering of the Western frontier, or choosing the life of a cowboy, was another way for the black man to escape slavery. In fact, most of the black cowboys were former slaves who were roping and branding cattle before they became free men. Traveling west for the black man was a chance to seek a new and free life, where in most cases skill would count more than skin color. Throughout the Western frontier, one could find blacks in all the different occupations, Historians will differ on the actual numbers, though, of black cowboys, but the figures range from 5,000 to 8,000. The early western frontier was dangerous, hard, tedious, lonely, and in some cases, very short. And the life of a cowboy, black or white, was a thankless job that paid little and was not too stable. The image of the cowboy is a symbol of manhood, courage, and strength. Today, the cowboy is still remembered as a special breed of man. The black cowboy experienced less discrimination on the trail than in any other occupation, open at the time. 
even though they were brought on to do the hardest work on the ranch and during the cattle drives. Life on the open range was more enjoyable, though, sleeping under the stars and judging each other as men first. Driving cattle up the trails to the market offered the black cowboy the chance to see and choose some remote areas to settle in, plus the possibility to own land and raise cattle. Black pioneers include cowboys, miners, lawmen, stagecoach drivers, saloon keepers, editors, and farmers. The names of Wyatt Earp, Bad Masterson, Jesse James, Billy the Kid, and Wild Bill Hickok are etched in stone as great participants in the American West. But due to an unwritten historical oversight, well, those who helped shape that stone, their names were left out. I'd like to take this time to introduce you to just a few. Boss Ickard, born 1847, died 1929. Before the cross-country cattle cars took the beef to feed the North, cowboys led the large herds across the open plains of Texas, through New Mexico, and into Colorado. Four trails northward became famous in Western history, the Chisholm, the Western, the Shawnee, and the Goodnight Loving Trail. Boss Ickard helped blaze the Goodnight Loving Trail. Boss Ickard was born a slave in Mississippi in 1847. When he was old enough to handle a horse, his master began to hire him out to other ranchers. As the word spread about his skills as a roper, rider, wrangler, and all-around cowboy, he was soon working for some of the biggest cattle ranchers in the business. At the end of the Civil War, Boss Ickard joined ranchers Oliver Loving and Charles Goodnight in their attempt to blaze a new cattle trail northward. This route became known as the Goodnight Loving Trail. Boss Ickard rode the trail for four years, becoming Goodnight's most devoted right-hand man. His ability to take charge in any difficult situation was remarkable. Goodnight said, Boss Ickard was my detective, banker, and everything else in Colorado, New Mexico, and the other wild country I was in. When we carried money, I gave it to Boss. I've trusted him further than any man. Boss Ickard never became rich, and he won no medals. But in the legends of Western cowboy history, Boss Ickard remembered as one of the strongest and ablest cowboy of them all. Azam Dart, born 1849, died 1900. Ned Huddleston, better known as Azam Dart, was born a slave in Arkansas in 1849, the year of the gold rush. Ned Huddleston was an unusual man. He was a black cowboy whose skills as an all-around cowman were unexcelled, but he also operated on both sides of the law one of the few black men who pursued such a dangerous profession. As a young boy, Ned worked as an orderly for his master and other Confederate officers during the Civil War. But with emancipation, he moved west into southern Texas and Mexico and worked as a rodeo clown. While in Mexico, he met a young Mexican and they formed a horse and cattle stealing partnership. After finding success as a horse and cattle thief, he decided to join a cattle drive. That took him to a place called Brown's Hole along the Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado borders, a haven for cattle thieves. Ned tried mining, but after being cheated out of his earnings, he joined the Tip Galt Gang and renewed his horse thieving activities. Their escapades ended in misfortune in Wyoming when a ranch owner and his cowhands ambushed the gang, killing all but Ned. After that ordeal, Ned changed his name to Azam Dart. He moved to Oklahoma and ranched for several years. That didn't last too long because he returned to Brown's Hole and got a job with the Middlesex Land and Cattle Company. Azam soon left that to start another ranch, stocking it with stolen cattle. Azam Dart was arrested several times for rustling, but was never convicted for lack of proof. Western jurors were often quite lenient with persons who attempted to improve their condition, 
through wrestling, especially if it was directed against larger outfits. Because of unsympathetic jurors, the cattle barons frequently hired regulators or stock detectives. In other words, hired killers. Tom Horn, a famous regulator, showed up in Brown's Hole posing as a rancher and horse buyer. And on the morning of October 3rd, 1900, Isom Dart walked out of his cabin and met his death. Isom Dart tried to leave his criminal past several times, and each time he went back. Although Isom Dart was known as a rustler, those that knew him attested to the fact that he had no equal as an all-around cowboy and that he was respected and fair. A good man and always helpful were the final remarks made at his burial. Isom Dart, born 1849, died 1900. Nat Love, born 1854, died who knows when. Two reasons stand out that make Nat Love, alias Deadwood Dick, a major figure in the American frontier. The first one, he became a famous black cowboy. And the second is, in 1907, he published his autobiography entitled, The Life and Adventures of Nat Love. Nat Love was born a slave in Tennessee in 1854. Because there were no schools for black children, Nat Love, at the age of 15, headed west to Kansas to become a cowboy. Nat soon arrived in the bustling town of Dodge and landed a $30 a month job as a cowpuncher. For more than a generation, he took part in the long drives that guided Texas beef to Kansas and points north. In Nat Love's 1907 autobiography, he wrote about his many adventures on the frontier. On July 4th, 1876, Nat Love entered the rodeo at Deadwood City in the Dakota Territory. He won several roping and shooting contests, and he reports, Right there, the assembled crowd named me Deadwood Dick and proclaimed me champion roper of the Western Cattle Country. This proud nickname and honor he carried for the rest of his life. To preserve it for posterity, he placed it in the subtitle of his autobiography. The wheels of progress finally caught up with Nat Love, alias Deadwood Dick, and most of the other cowboys. Now powerful locomotives whisked Texas beef to eastern consumers. Cowboy Nat Love left the range for a job on the railroad as a Pullman porter, the best type of position open to black men at the time. The cowboy life had been good to Nat Love. He had learned to speak Spanish in Arizona and to read cattle brands better than any cowboy in the West and to become a champion roper, rider, and good all-around cowboy. Nat Love, alias Deadwood Dick, a black cowboy who without a doubt made and left his mark on the American Western frontier. Bill Pickett, born 1860, died 1932. He was described as the greatest sweat and dirt cowhand that ever lived, bar none. Bill Pickett was born around 1860 near Taylor, Texas. His potential as a good cowhand was spotted early by one of the owners of the 101, a 100,000 acre ranch in Oklahoma. Bill worked on the ranch with 200 other cowboys, bronco busting, calf roping, handling a branding iron, and becoming a sure shot marksman. And he was considered the best of them all. But what set him apart from the others was his ability with a horse and his peculiar form of bulldogging. In fact, he's credited with being the inventor of steer wrestling. His concept of steer wrestling was to ride alongside an animal, leap upon its back, then grab its horns and twist them until the steer raised its head. Then he would bite into the steer's lip with his teeth, throw his hands up and just with his teeth drag the steer to the ground. He became famous as a rodeo star and with the 101 Wild West shows, he traveled across the United States, Europe, the Western Hemisphere, and even Mexico, where he was billed as the Dusky Demon for wrestling a full-grown Spanish fighting bull hand-to-hand -hand and winning. As a box office draw in rodeos at home and abroad, his assistants at various times included Will Rogers and Tom Mix. 
Bill Pickett died on April 2nd, 1932, at the age of 71, on his own 160-acre ranch in Oklahoma. On December 9th, 1971, Bill Pickett was the first African American to be inducted into the National Rodeo Cowboy Hall of Fame. Bill Pickett, a black cowboy, born 1860, died 1932. As I said at the beginning, the rodeo is the only reminder of the early West that we have left. And parts of the rodeo were invented by the black cowboys. You see, after the cattle drive was over, the black cowboy couldn't go into town for recreation like the white cowboys could. So they stayed outside of town and created their own. No brag, just thanks.